All right, if you would open your Bibles to Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. As we in between studies right now, and so you know, I've been noticing here lately that the woke mob is beginning to retreat in a lot of areas. Now, don't get me wrong. If we were to go downtown Houston, it'd still be there. If you go to anything that has a left-wing leader, the, mo- the, the woke crowd are still, are still in high force. But if you, if you pay attention... A lot of America is waking up. But even though the woke are are still out there and we have some part of our society waking up to the lies of the left, of the woke media and everything that it entails, masculinity and what... what men are and what the roles of a man are have been a, have been attacked since the beginning since Genesis and so we're going to be speaking uh, dealing tonight with manhood and man's uh, in man's relation to leadership so now that you have found Ezekiel 28 I invite you to stand as we honor God with the reading of his word. We're going to begin in verse number 11. If you read your Bible, you know your Bible. Uh, This deals with Satan and his fall. Uh, Ezekiel 28, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, and workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast not, or wast Upon the holy mountain of God, thou hast walked up and drawn, in, uh, or and walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in the in in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee by the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the uh, the mine uh, the midst of thee with violence and thou hast sinned therefore i will cast thee as a profane uh, as the as profane out of the mountain of god and i will destroy thee o covering cherub from the midst of the stones of fire Thus, or thine heart was filled up because, or lifted up because of thy beauty. Let's pray. Father, as we are to the preaching and teaching part of the service, Father, I ask that you would once again empty me of myself. Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Spirit, that I may preach thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, I know we have a lot of ladies here. 
Lord, but we're dealing with masculinity, Lord, and men as a whole, and the leadership role that we play. Father, I ask that you would help us tonight, that we would not allow anything to buy for our time, that we would not allow Satan, Lord, to use anything to uh, keep it, to keep us from focusing in on your word and on the message tonight, Lord. And I ask that the Holy Spirit would flow into every heart and every mind tonight, Lord, convicting us of our sin, Lord, and thank you for what you are going to do. And I ask that you do these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. May God bless the reading of his word. Sorry, I'm using a different Bible. My preaching Bible, the one I use and study out of, it's falling apart. And uh, to keep it from actually destroying, and I've uh, set it aside and uh, maybe getting it rebound. And so, but uh, I apologize on my reading. Uh, it's a little bit more narrow or the, than the coloring of the page. And so, I apologize. For that, but manhood, manliness, and our leadership, I'll let the guys upstairs determine a title. I, that could be dangerous, but I trust Brother Bud, so we will uh, talk about, we'll think about this. And so, uh, listen, uh, talking about Satan's fall, we know that God created Satan, that Satan is a created being. He is not omnipresent. Like God is, right? God, we, we know that God is on the present. He's everywhere. can be everywhere at the same time because he's God. Satan, on the other hand, is not. Uh, he is a created being from God just like you and I. And he can't be everywhere. But we know that there are angels that fell with Satan. Uh, and they, they do his bidding. But if, reading here in, in chapter 28, and if you look at verses 11 through 17, there's some things here that I want us to point out in, in Getting his introduction to uh, the actual message. Uh, if you see there, uh, it says that we, we talk about how he was a created. In, in verse number 13, he says, The day that thou was created. God said that, he, you know, about his creation. And not only that, but it says, he says in verse 15, that thou was perfect. That he was perfect. It talks about how he was, how the the beauty of him. Uh, talking about all the stones that we consider as uh, uh, you know gold and all these precious stones that was his covering that he was covered with. I mean, the Bible describes here. God describes Satan as a beautiful or Lucifer in his name as beautiful, and not only was beautiful, but he was perfect until. He sinned, and we see uh, how he sinned. Uh, he, was, he sinned because he was lifted up in pride because of his beauty. And so, you know, uh, Satan, he's a created being. We, we know that he is not anything like Hollywood portrays. Well, now we, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to diminish anything. We, we, we. I'm not even going to bring up the, you know, how they say the red suit, horns. No, no. If, if there's actually a TV show back in the day. I don't know if it's still going on called Lucifer. Listen, you look at all these TV shows that Hollywood puts out. Never depicts Satan as who he really is. They call, you know. They say, you know, even, even the Mormons say that Jesus and Satan were brothers. The Lubricers were brothers. Both of them created by God and as brothers. One, you know, and no, that's not who uh, Jesus and Satan, Lucifer, are not brothers. Never were brothers. The Bible never identifies them as brothers. But uh, Jesus being God, you know, uh, Satan was a created being and and he, Lucifer, was not the. He's not the king of, uh, of hell or king of those things. No, he's a fallen angel that got pride lifted up that God is eventually going to destroy, right? And so we we know these things about Satan. Those of us who are believers who've read our Bible, I mean, who's been in church uh, any length of time, we have an idea. We know what the Bible says about Satan. Right, and so uh, let's turn in, let's turn back to Genesis chapter number three, and where Satan comes on the scene, and so evidently 
the fall of Satan happened right before the creation of the world. Because it shows here, we see that he says he's been in Eden, and so the fall has to have happened right before uh, Genesis chapter 3, where we see Satan communicating with Eve. And you don't, uh, you don't have to, I'm going to read it in, in verses 1. It says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. First of all, Eve should have freaked out that a snake was talking. Listen, I, I, I'm not afraid of some snakes. Or, you know, if it's poisonous, I can tell it's poisonous. Yeah, I'm not going to get it. I'm going to go in the opposite direction. But if I'm outside doing something and a snake comes up and starts speaking to me, and I can understand it, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Ronnie what he put in my Dr. Pepper. All right? And so, no, and, and, and so he... He, he, he comes up to Eve, the serpent says, subtle above all the other creatures, right? More than all the other creatures, and, and ask uh, Eve a question. Hath, ha, yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? We can go back to the second, uh, in verse, uh, chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, and talk uh, about how God told Adam that he could have all, he could partake of all, the, uh, all of the garden except for one tree. Right, God said you can ha you can uh, take all, you can have of all the garden except for the the one tree of knowledge of good and evil. Right, we we know that the the tree of knowledge, and so he and so in chapter two, verse sixteen and seventeen, we see that, and then Satan comes along to Eve and said, "Has not God said that you can have partake of every tree of the garden?" And the woman, verse number two, said unto the serpent, "We may eat of the fruit of." the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, uh, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, we know, according to God's word, that Eve added to that, right? And so, and the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. You're not going to die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and, also, and gave also unto her husband... With her. That's important. With her. Hello? He was with her when she took the fruit. Right? With her. And he did eat. And the eyes of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And so the serpent, we see here that the serpent cast doubt on what God had said. You know, Satan goes to Eve and twists God's word. Satan will always twist God's word. And let me tell you, he knows the word of God better than you and I. He was there, right, from the beginning. And so he will always twist God's word, causing doubt on his commandments. I mean, think about this. We have God's commandments, we have his word, but yet we will always put, Satan will always cost down and put in our minds, well, it's not that bad. You know, if I do this, it's really not that bad. You know, God, I, I know God says I'm not supposed to do that, but come on. Right? And so... We know some of Satan's illusions concerning God's commands. I have just two here. One, uh, uh, we, we know that uh, in believers, uh, talking about uh, believers as a whole, 
that there's a lot of believers out there that think that I can go out and I can social drink. We know that, right? We, I don't have to spend a lot of time on that. We, we, we all work with those believers. They say that they're Christians, but you will see them going to Walmart and buying a bunch of beer or wine. Or they will go, they'll go to a restaurant and they will order wine. You know, I, I see posts on Facebook of friends, uh, of acquaintances of mine that I grew up with that, uh, that say they're believers, but yet you will see them with a glass of wine. And in their hand, and sorry, that's anti-Bible. Wine is a mocker, right? And so but we have plenty of verses that says that we ought not to be messing with it, but nonetheless, really, yeah. Uh, it's not that bad. It's just a, listen, the, AP, the ABV is just, it's not real strong. Alcohol by volume, right? For well, those that you don't know, that's what, if you go and you read it, that's what it's talking about. ABV is about how much alcohol is in that particular can or that bottle or whatever it is. It's not much. A little leaven. Leaven at the whole lump. It's not that bad, Brother Jason. Just a little bit of alcohol. Well, why, why, do we have, why do I have... Well, the Bible... This is something that Satan has cast out. Well, Jesus made water into wine. Paul told Timothy to get a little wine for thy belly's sake. It's okay. No, it's not. Now, the, uh, you know, uh, uh, we know that... Satan has twisted scripture, uh, or convinced men that he's twisted scripture, and convinced believers that they can do that. How about this? Adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Jesus says if you look after a woman and lust after her in your heart, you've already committed adultery. If you lust after her, you have committed adultery in your heart. That's what Jesus says, right? Brother, well, brother, brother Mark, I, I, listen, I'm not, I'm not cheating on my wife. Okay, but looking at those young adults on Facebook in their underwear, that, that's okay? Going on Twitter and looking, up, and, and looking at these, these women scantily dressed, that's okay? No, it's not okay. Amen, Brother Mark, it is not okay for us to be looking at those things. It's not. You, you cannot t honestly tell me that you can look at a younger adult, men, look at a younger female adult in her underwear and not have some kind of thought pass through your mind. Now, once that thought, and you get rid of it, and you turn your head, that's one thing. But you let that thought there, leave it there, you're going to lust. It's going to happen. I'm sorry, but so, it, it's just a little, listen, it, it, I don't love my wife anymore, so am I really cheating on my wife? Yes! Yes! You made a covenant with your wife before God. Right? That's what we did. And just as, let me let you know, teenagers, I don't saw, know if you po saw the post I posted on Facebook yesterday, but you better look at their Bibles and not their, not their wallets. You better, how they treat their Bibles, listen, if their Bibles are wore out, then you know you're going to have a good man. Hello? Look at, the, look at their Bible, and not, the, not, not their wallets, not their shoes, not their car, not their clothes. You look at their Bibles. So the, these are the things that Satan has used to twist God's word to, God, you know, yes, God, listen, you're not cheating on your, look, you can go to that website and look at that video or look at those pictures. You're not cheating on your wife. It's, yes, it's digital adultery. Hello? These are some of the things that Satan has twisted in Scripture, just as he twisted this Scripture. Half God said, did he not say you could eat of all the trees? We see here that, that Adam was next to or with Eve when she partook 
of that forbidden fruit. And so we see here the first social experiment gone wrong. Satan fooled Eve. She thought that the tree looked good. She said, it looks good. And the fruit, and it make, and if I eat it, it, could be, it would make me wise. She took the fruit, ate it. Not only did she eat it, ate it she gave it to her husband. And what did Adam do? This whole time that Eve was communicating with this serpent, with Satan, what did he do? You know what he probably did, what most men do? I used to say this, watching TV. But you know what he was doing? That's really, I mean, think about it. If it were happening today, that's what Adam would be doing. While, he, while he's thinking Eve's doing what she needs to be doing, gathering some berries, whatever, preparing dinner. No, uh, Satan's talking to her. And Adam did nothing. was there. She was talking to him, and Adam threw her under bus. Remember when God came, Adam, Adam. And Adam's like, well, I hid from you because, well, I'm naked. How did you know you were naked? Well, that woman that you gave me, she gave me the, that forbidden fruit, and I ate it. Pass the buck. So-and-so's fault. No, Adam, you were there when Satan was talking to your wife. You were there when she ate the fruit from the tree, and you were there when she gave it, and you partook of it yourself. Man, we, we have dropped the ball. We have. Why are the average churches in America more filled with women than men? Because we've dropped the ball. We would rather do our own things than what is necessary. Folks, man, we can't get, God is not going to give us a, pa a pass. Did he give Adam a pass? No. Did he give Eve a pass? Oh, well, she, got, she got some pretty good, pretty bad judgment, didn't she? Have to go through labor pains now? Yeah. God's not going to give us a pass. And, and, and we can't think that, it, listen, as long as my wife or my kids go to church, that's okay. Uh, you know, I, I can deal with that. You know, as long as they're, do, they're good kids and my wife is not doing anything outrageous, it, it's okay. No. You don't get a pass and, and say, that's okay. God, God will understand. No, God does not understand. He has this, God is black and white, folks, when it comes to his commandments, right? Black and white. It doesn't matter what color of the Bible you have. It's black and white. And so we have dropped the ball as, in America, especially on manhood and being the godly leadership that we're to, be, that we're to have. We can't listen, man. You can't stand by and let Satan have full reign of your house because when you are not the man you're supposed to be and be the spiritual leader you're supposed to be, you are allowing Satan into your house and having him to have rule in it. We are. Why? Because, men, you're to be. We are to be the spiritual leaders of that household. God gave us that, that title, that, uh, not just that title, but that role. I'm not, listen, I'm not saying, ladies, you, you're not capable. That's just not the role that God gave you. Not anything against you. Some of you are probably more capable than what a lot of men are. But it's not your role. Then we've dropped the ball. We can't, uh, we can't allow Satan to have rule in our, uh, uh, have even a, a crack in the, to the house. 
We can't just stand by and do nothing when Satan's going after your family. Because that's who he's going after. When you stand by, he's already, he's already gotten you a little bit. When men stand by and don't do what is necessary, that God expects us to do as men, can't just stand by and, and blame others for your lack of spiritual leadership, can we? We can't just stand by and say, well, it's so and so's fault. They hurt me in church. It's not their fault that you're, you're not being the man you're supposed to be. You have God's word. We, you, have, you have access to God's word just like everybody else. You can't blame that church down the road that, that, that maybe hurts you or the, that, that church is full of hypocrites. Well, look in the mirror. You want to. No, we, we, we don't get a pass. We can't pass the buck. Because so-and-so said something, or so-and-so did something, or that church did this, that church, this church did that, and so I don't go to church anymore. Go ahead. Go ahead and do that. See where that will lead you. No, you don't, we don't get to play the Adam and that woman, so-and-so, it's her, their fault. No, you don't get to do that. Listen, it's, listen, I am not the spiritual leader of your family. I am not, Brother Roy and Mr. Abita, spiritual leader in that household. Brother Roy is. Brother Jason is his household. Brother Steve is his household. That's why God gave us, gave men, and that's the role that he gave them. I'm not to be your, your household's spiritual leader. That's the husband's job. And when there is no husband, ladies, you are to pick up the slack. Yeah. You need to guide your children in the way that they should go. Hello? So, so, so listen, it's not the church's job to be the spiritual leader in your household. It's, you know, it's not your pastor or the church's fault when your kids or family leave the church. It's not their fault that you left. Can't pass the buck that Adam did. We, so, we, listen, we can't say what we're doing, what we're allowing to happen in the house or in our own lives is, is fine and, and God is okay with it. He's not, is he? This morning, before we took up the offering, I said it took eating uh, it took eating one forbidden fruit to invoke the wrath of God against Adam, and to and to plunge mankind into depravity. If it just took eating one forbidden fruit for the wrath of God to come down on mankind and to plunge us into depravity, sin then what we think is okay and is fine, God says, no, it is not okay and it is not fine. That's one of the biggest problems in churches today. We think we're okay and we're fine, and when we're really not, well, Brother Mark, I'm saved. Yes, you might be saved eternally. You might be fine that way, but you're not, in, you're not fine and you're not okay in standing with God as in blessings, as in fellowship, in him using you. Hello? No, we're not fine. We're not okay. If one piece of fruit did that. No, uh, pride gets in the way. Pride gets in the way. Oh, I, I'm saved, yes. But listen, I'm fine. It's okay. I, I, it's under the, you know... I don't have to worry about it. Jesus is my Savior. I put my faith in Him and what He did on the cross, so it's all good. No. For eternity, yes, but no. It's, it's... Why do you think our society is the way it is? Too many men have thought it that way. This is why schools are run rampant with wokeology. 
too many men have walked away from their families chasing after sin and not being the man that God created them to be. You can talk, probably talk to Brother Jason and Miss Lauren in the public school system. We were talking about that this morning, wasn't we? When somebody gets hurt, they have to cancel school and, and have all the kids go and talk to the counselors. I mean, let me help you. Let me help you out. Most of those counselors that are in public schools, their foundation is not this book. Their foundation, what, what their counseling. comes from Satan psychology all these study of mankind you're, all these things that I can't remember the famous doctor not Spock but uh, Freud that's that that's listen that's the books they're talking about that's their foundation Man, you drop, we've dropped the ball. We have. I dare to say, when your teenagers leave house and they leave the church, you better look in the mirror. You better, you better put your shin on, because it's going to hurt. You better look in the mirror. Well, I'm not responsible for my teenagers' decisions. Okay. You might be able to say that, but you're not going to be able to pass the book and say, listen, I did the best I could. Did you really? When uh, baseball practice or baseball games or soccer practice, soccer games or football practice, football games or UIL or anything happened while church was going on or when you were supposed to be doing the ministry, God's ministry at the church and you let them go out and you participated in those things instead of doing what God has told you to do, it's not your fault. You better look in the mirror. Because you said church is not necessary. Ministry is not necessary. And so your children look at it and say, not a big deal. Drop the ball. Pass the buck. Whatever you want to call it. We are not Okay, we are not fine. L let me help you out. Satan exceeds in deception. He excels in deception. And if you think, or if I think, what little sins that we call little sins that we are doing is okay, you're worse off than what you thought because you're not okay. Sin is sin. Right? We don't put the grading scale on it. We don't get to put the grading scale on it. Because one fruit, eating one little fruit, caused so much damage to mankind. Hello? Hello? Men, our society and we will not see a full revival in America until men become the leaders that God intended in, intended them to be and accept and play the role that God gave them. Why? Revival cannot happen until sin is dealt with. Revival is not singing a bunch of songs. It's not revival. Revival is not just being happy. No, in order for revival to happen in an individual heart, sin has to be dealt with. You and I have to see our sin as God sees our sin. As wicked trespass it's it's horrible we we have to see them uh, that sin as god sees us and once we deal with sin 
and we look at our sin as God sees it, and we go to God with our sins, we commune with God about our sins, then revival can happen. Do I know what happened over there in Tennessee or Pennsylvania, wherever it was at? Do I know that they were having revival? No, I don't. And that's all I'm going to leave up to it. I don't know anybody that was there. But if we as a church are going to have revival, we uh, individually and collectively have to deal with our sin. Because what we're doing, the little sins that we say we're allowing, that we think we're okay with, God is still not okay with. Those little sins still sent Jesus to the cross. The fruit that Adam and Eve ate sent Jesus to the cross. Well, why? Well, if God knew this was that they were going to eat, well, then why did God put it in there? He had it in place because He loved Adam and He loved His creation, and He wanted His creation to love Him, to choose Him. But instead, our hearts are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who could know it? We love and go after other things because of that wicked flesh that we fight. Remember what Steve Carrington said? The one I feed wins. The one I feed wins. If you want the spirit to win in your life, you want to live a spirit-led, spirit-filled life, feed the spirit. Well, how do I feed the Spirit, Brother Mark? You read your Bible. You stay close to God. Stay in good communication with God. Obey His commandments, His statutes, what's in His Word. Apply His Word to your life. That's how you, that's how you do that. That's how you feed the Spirit. But if you want to be a fleshly believer, not faithful in church, not... Making sure your kids are following Christ. Uh, making sure that they do what they're supposed to be. Go, go ahead. Work on Sundays. Go ahead and get a job that makes you work on Sundays. Every Sunday. Go, go, go ahead. Chase those hobbies that take you away from the ministry. Go ahead, go ahead, take those, do those hobbies that, that takes you away from the ministry. Go, go, go chase after uh, uh, the Lombardi trophy with your team. Go ahead and, and, and go after the Winston Cup or whatever it's called now in NASCAR. Go after the, whatever the trophy is in October with uh, baseball. Go ahead and with your team, chase those seasons and see how, what your kids think about church and what your kids think about serving God. Feed that flesh. It's a choice, you know. It's a choice. And God is not okay with a choice that a lot of us make, the choices a lot of us make every day. No, those little sins are not okay. But the great thing is, God is a God of many, many, many other chances. Wage of sin is death, but, 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 right? God is always a God having his arms wide open, welcoming, welcoming us back. It's a choice we make. Will we choose? To feed the spirit rather than the flesh. Don't be Adam. Don't be Adam. And throw your wife or someone else under the bus and blame them why they're the reason you're not the spiritual leader you're supposed to be. You don't get the excuse. I don't get the excuse. Father, 